It's a great honor for our college to have our chief guest, Honorable Mr. Justice Amarnath Jindal, former judge Punjab in Haryana High Court. So, Okrets most appropriately describe the essential qualities of a good judge. Four things belong to a judge, to hear courteously, to answer wisely, to consider soberly, and to decide impartially. We all would unequally agree that he epitomized these qualities of a judge that Socrates had outlined more than 2,400 years ago. Justice Jindal lived a life that represents combination of excellence in his academic pursuits and landmark judgments which contributed to the development of jurisprudence in important areas of law and justice. Sir, Heger, Sir had a remarkable journey in legal fraternity. He was an outstanding judge, a man of brilliant intellect, unpeachable integrity and utmost rectitude. Now, without taking much time, I would like to invite our chief guest, Honorable Mr. Justice Amarnath Jindal, former judge, Punjab and Haryana High Court, to share his wisdom with all of us. Sir, please. Hello, Umar. Is your line clear? So you're perfectly audible. Audible? Perfectly, sir. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, I pay my gratitude to all the guests, particularly. Uh, SP Bansar, Shri SP Bansar, Chancellor, Gita Institute of Law, Rahutash Kumar, Dramindra Patel, Shri Arjit Prasad, Senior Advocates, Guest of Honor, Shri Dilip Upke, Vice Chancellor, and all the, and pay my wishes to all the other 39 participants of the Gita Institute, this mood court competition, in mood court competition, uh, I have been invited a few days back by uh, Assistant Director Isha Gupta of the Gita Institute of Law to take part uh, to say some words in the to some say say some words in this mood court competition on the benedictory section, and I accepted the same. It was my first video conference as I had already been ignoring to join to attend the functions online as I was not used to it. But I wanted to get a new experience, therefore I joined, but I had the impression that it is not a biomedia for offline uh, hearings in the courts, as well as in the mood court, court competitions. At the, as in the mood court competitions, many things crop up. Many things are, um, many things are uh, learned at the spot when you go or a particular function or a particular uh, program or in the court, then you make a, your mindset and you are ready for that thing. But at the time when you are sitting at house, you are not so prepared as you are at the stage, as you are before the students or as you are before the faculty members. This is only a <laughs> pictorial conference which we which we address or which we which we hear, but still at the same time, since uh, since we have been compelled by the circumstances to go online to address, uh, and this is no other alternative except uh, in the the days of pandemics uh, to work on online. <clears throat> but the now I am coming. What is it? law, how it has been introduced, and what was the necessity, whether it was only for profession or it is for only a job, I will say something about it, how the law was introduced. In ancient times, the people, when the people, people came on the earth, Adam and Eve, there was a, by way of procuration, there was an increase in the population. You see, the, they started fighting with each other, and there was no rule of law at that time. 
it was a might and might is right then the, then might is right then with the more increase in population they started um, they started residing in the groups at the at the banks of the canals to get water and food and <clears throat> wherever there was food there was a quarrel and they needed some some person to lead them and teach them something so that they may be a civilized society then they uh, they started finding out their heads and who will represent them and uh, solve their disputes but that would also did not work and there was a partiality and uh, there was a <coughs> there was partiality and uh, power power muscle power as well as the money power then the then uh, these some uncodified law in the shape of in the traditions conventions precedents also but start, uh, also started being followed but that was also not sufficient to indians it was britishers who brought indian penal code as well as many other acts to impose upon india so so in 1861 the indian penal code uh, came into force and thereafter many other penal codes and some other codified law also came into force and, and thereafter <clears throat> those the most of many amendments were made as per the conditions as per the conditions in the law uh, then uh, conditions in the law ultimately uh, now we see that various amendments in the code have been made in order to fix uh, fit in the situations situations now law uh, law schools came into existence or the law institutes have came into existence and the students started thinking that these uh, institution these this profession this is the profession is meant for jobs for in the jobs and in uh, jobs in many uh, institutes or it was it was to, to practice or uh, or otherwise otherwise a good advocates but turned politicians good advocates are good uh, are good uh, businessmen good advocates are country makers and law makers and politicians Uh, and now the now the students think better to join the institutes but what happens with them they join the institutes and the institute owners earn crores of rupees to <coughs> at their by paying them the is the small pennies and they turned into rags this is uh, that, that is what i say that the profession this is a very noble profession very noble profession if it is practiced in with dedication and devotion and the, the people are waiting for you people are waiting for you to make them aware of the rights and duties in fact law was meant for a common man it was common the books are not difficult to implement for a common man but with the uh, with the awareness uh, awareness in the society the laws have been made complicated by the uh, by the people as well as the lawyers <coughs> lawyers now coming uh, to the moot courts moot court is one of the best exciting activities for the law students uh, proceeding in the moot court mirror real life court proceedings the purpose of the activity is to help the law students understand how the real courts work and their proper code of conduct the importance of the dress code and the use of the formal language that is what i was saying that dress code now we don't know the when we go when we attend the moot court what is a moot court moot court is, is just like a mock trial is a fixed trial or This part was imported from both concepts as a mock mock trial or fixed trial. This moot court was held that was a really trained to train the lawyers 
to train the students to become good lawyers, <clears throat> to tell them but who, what is the who is the plaintiff, who is the defendant, and who is the prosecutor, and who is the accused, and who is the defense counsel, who is the counsel for the complainant. Mooting is a great way to develop one's confidence, speaking, writing skills. It creates, it teaches them tolerance and to tolerance, to keep patience, to, to hear the other party, to learn about their ins and outs, to learn their, the, their own difficulties, own weaknesses in the case, and uh, to create confidence. Confidence. And it also, moot courts also teach how to speak, how to speak, how to manage the work, the time, the uh, manage the judgment, judgment, uh, and how the, they also learn what, um, how, but, but, is, but should be the actual defense for, a, for his client and what is in the mind of the opposite party and how to meet the you know, argument of the opposite party. They are to prepare their own arguments as well as the arguments of the opposite party. The purpose of the moot court competition is to make students aware of the court proceedings related to disputes between the parties. These competitions are organized mostly in law schools for the students who wish to pursue their careers as lawyers, judges, and arbitrators. The practice helps in development of the legal skills, research equipment, and speaking skills. The purpose of mooting is not the same as public speaking or debating. Moot courts are more interactive in nature, and there is a, there is a cross questioning. Moot courts have two teams, defendants and the uh, plaintiffs, the state as well as the defense counsel. The importance of the moot court is the um, is considered necessary because of the many reasons. It helps the students to engage and understand legal issues. It helps students to analyze legal topics and work on its research. Students learn to work in teams and learn from their uh, teammates. Students can demonstrate their advocacy skills and legal skills. Students can improve their confidence and speaking skills. Students can learn from your, your peers and develop your debating skills. Mooting is intellectually rewarding and uh, stimulating uh, for budding liars. Uh, if I if I expose myself openly and bluntly, then uh, moot court is the is a, a mechanism to teach the budding liars becoming liars and the law-knowing law people, the ethics to work in the court, to, uh, to appear before the court, the manner in which he is to appear, the things which he is to speak, and the ethics which he, over which he is to work. Uh, in these, he, uh, these prepared moot courts competitions must keep in mind, the candidates must know the facts of the case, the candidates cannot manipulate the facts of the case. The candidates should emphasize on the relevant facts of the case. The candidates should know how to exclude the irrelevant facts. Each, each participant is given, as I had already said, that the candidates must learn the time management and the precious time should not be wasted over the superfluous arguments, irrelevant arguments, and on irrelevant facts, when they must, uh, if he touches the core issues and the advances the relevant arguments, that those are appreciable in comparison with the wastage of time over the unnecessary and irrelevant pleadings or uh, evidence, which is not admissible in evidence. The students should know, as they are they are working for the nation working for the nation. They are not only working for themselves. As such, it is the, they are also not to misguide the court. They are not to help unnecessary to the courts, um, to, the, to his client, for which he is not required to do. He is not to support his, his, his uh, illegal, illegal mechanism, illegal uh, 
uh, activities, the lawyer is to guide the court for, to, you know, and advance the argument to reach the relevant and conclusion, relevant and necessary conclusion in the facts and circumstances of the case. And such advocates are appreciated and uh, appreciated and given some benefit. <clears throat> and they reach the high esteem if they pro guide properly to the courts in reaching the conclusions as I said, the Supreme Court of India is sitting at the helm of affairs and uh, th that the judgments advanced by the Supreme Court of India are guide, best guide to the lawyers to implement in their case, to implement even by arguing their cases. By, at the end, I think that you are already exhausted but on two days exercise in this moot court and uh, the deserving candidates must be awarded with all these my words. I say thanks to Gita Institute of Law for inviting me in the, this competition.